of one. I'm of course John Dole, right here in Tokyo, Japan. Now you should be aware by now, there's been some attacks in China. Uh, the first one was in Beijing. And the second one was a hit on a uh, Communist Party headquarters in the uh, upper region, I believe, of China. Now, the first group who were immediately blamed for this was a ethnic minority in China known as the Uyghur. They're a Muslim mon minority. They live, like I said, um, in an auto-autonomous region of China. Now, it wasn't just the, the CCP blaming these people, but as soon as the attacks went out, I saw people everywhere, all, every social media I could find, uh, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, were quick to blame this group. But there are some material conditions. A lot of people are simply not considering, not looking at, or may not even be aware of. So let's take a look at what's been going on between the... Um, CCP and the Uyghurs, right? Now, for years now, there's been steps taken by the CCP to further marginalize this group. Uh, they've taken steps to erase their cultural heritage, their ethnic background, and their very identity as people. Now, in the mid-90s, and also during the Beijing Olympics, there were some uprisings by the Uyghurs. They got tired of the beatings. They got tired of being erased, ignored, and treated like they don't even have a right to exist. Now, both times there were riots. There were um, destruction of Chinese citizen property. There were clashes with police. Uh, martial law was declared. I assume a slew of people were arrested and thrown in jail. So you see, twice these people have attempted to stand up to this, to stand up to the destruction of who they are, the very essence of who they are. And, of course, after the Beijing incident happened uh, recently, there was an immediate hardcore crackdown on the Uyghurs in Beijing itself. Now, a lot of Uyghurs will come into Beijing to try to make a little extra money by selling their local wares. Now, before all these problems started, they could do this quite openly. But recently, they have to keep things hidden and be ready to run on a moment's notice. Because they never know where they're going to be attacked. You know, some abusive person or government or from the government itself is going to come in and crack down on them, find some type of silly little law that they may or may not be in violation of and use that to shut them down, arrest them, and beat them. Quite unbelievable situation. Yeah. You know, as, as we all know, CCP has not been following socialism, or even Maoism, for quite some time. We know that the death of Mao was also the death of socialism in China. So, you know, the Communist Party in China is communist in name only. Any Communist Party would not engage in this type of behavior against a marginalized group. It would not further marginalize them. So, you know, did the Uyghurs carry out these attacks? Well, there hasn't been much evidence presented by the CCP. Actually, not a lot of evidence at all, all circumstantial stuff. Like um, the Beijing attack, they said that because there was gasoline in, in, the, um, in the car, that's proof it was a terrorist attack. Well, it's a little over 2,000 miles from the Uyghur homeland all the way down to Beijing. The, the roads are really rough, not easy to get through. So it's common for such a long journey for them to pack extra gasoline because there's no gas stations, okay? It's, you're not talking about a, a typical country here. You're looking at China, which is largely still underdeveloped 
in huge sections of the country. You know, so that's all circumstantial. And Uyghurs themselves' leadership have questioned the CCP on if they are ones guilty of doing this, and the CCP has been reluctant to even discuss anything with them. It's like, you did it, we know it, but they don't have to present any evidence here. It really is sad. So don't blame the Uyghur people for this. Blame the CCP for increasing the contradictions that exist when dealing with the Uyghurs and the rest of society in China. It's the CCP who is creating this. They are the ones destroying these people, putting these people in a position. If they don't break out and fight like angry wild animals, they're screwed. And when they do stand up, of course they're going to be massively crushed and then blamed for being terrorists. It really is a sad situation. So guys, again, don't blame the Uyghurs. Blame the government of China for creating such situations. I thank you guys a lot for watching this. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. And until next time, this is me, John Doe, in Tokyo. Checking out.